do you call it capicola or gabagool? Capicola. Capicola, right. So <laughs> it's Italian American uh, slang. Gabagool breaks down like capricola, and then yeah. it went capricole, and then it went gabagool. Yeah, that's some damn good gabagool right there. Hey, Regina's was good, but this one. One of the main things that we do on the Fun Bros channel is explore culture through food. Today we're with our Italian friend Marco and we're gonna be having Italian sandwiches in four different formats. The heritage, hipster, homestyle, and even one directly from Italy, the homeland. So which one's the best? What's the story behind each one? Which one do you relate to? Let's find out. What's going on everybody? Welcome to another episode of The World NY where we try to travel the world through New York City. We are in Little Italy again with our Italian-American friend, Marco. What's good, everybody? I think a lot of people have had an Italian-style sandwich in their life, whether it was at a major commercial chain or at their local store, but very few people know about how this culture came from Italy to New York to the rest of America. So we're here at Parisi Bakery. It's been here since 1903. It specializes in the Italian subs and their fresh bread. So this is the old school Italian American yes. one. We're gonna go try some very authentically Italian from Italy sandwiches. Shoot, we might even try Subways. Marco, you told us your Italian great great grandfather came to America in what, 1900? About 1900, yes. We actually have found a photo of him chilling on this street. Not everybody always has an authentically Italian friend to walk them through, but you're gonna do that for us today. 100%. Let's, Let's go. go. Hey guys, thanks for clicking on that video real quick. Let me tell you about our sponsor, Yemi Bai. Yemi Bai is the online destination to get Asian snacks and appliances. We recently did a two hour live stream for them on the Yemi Bai TV YouTube channel, so check it out. All right, you guys, we just arrived at the Yemi Bai offices. This snackathon is going down. Let's go. Woo! Hi. Hello. Hi. Oh, perfect. Lots of lights. Hi. Look at the. They got the ring lights here. Team Yammy Bai is here. All right, so we're about to kick off the two hour live stream with Yammy Bai, and then we're going to find out who's winning that year's worth of snacks. Reminds me a little bit of uh, almost like a me rang. To all the Cantonese people, Daigaho. All right, everybody, we just wrapped up the two hour live stream. Shout out to the Yammy Bai team right here. We tried a whole bunch of snacks and foods and instant hot pots that we've never had before. Two people walked away with a year's worth of snacks. And then also we gave away a whole bunch of packages. I wore a Hydra mask like half the time too. If you guys want to see that stream or any part of the stream again, you can go to Yammy Buy TV or just go to yammybuy.com. This does have everything from like face covering masks to Hydra masks to steamers, snacks that people ate growing up in China, the snacks that people grew up eating in Japan, Korean snacks. There's, there's all types of snacks there at Yammy Buy, so check out yammybuy.com. That was a lot of fun. I can really feel like the old schoolness in here, like almost like it could be the 60s right 60s, now. Like the flow 100%. is the same. Two guys cutting meat, cutting bread, putting it together. And so you got the plan, you said I'm gonna eat half now and half later. Absolutely. Eat the whole thing, you get knocked out. The spicy is good. Spicy. Spicy. A little spicy is good? We'll get okay. a little spicy. And okay. what's the best thing to add on that third sandwich? Okay. mozzarella, rose and pepper. Okay. All right, so we just got our sandwiches here at Parisi Bakery. It was a very authentic experience in there. This is the most famous sandwich that uh, they're known for. Fresh mozzarella, a slice of tomato, they have chicken cutlets, with prosciutto, with a little balsamic glaze as well they have on there. This is more of an Italian-American sub because of the chicken collet and prosciutto on the sandwich. Okay. The, the dentist. Oh my gosh. Where to begin? Dude, there's three chicken cutlets. See that prosciutto. Okay. okay. Really interesting to have prosciutto mixed in with like a fried chicken cutlet. For me, I get a 3.5 out of five. I give it a three out of five. All right, I'm excited about this next sandwich, okay? It's called the gabagool, but that is the Italian-American way of saying it, right? Uh, yes, that is. So it's funny, because when I ordered it before, I said to the guy, can I get the capicola? Do you have capicola? Uh, capicola? And it, then he said, oh, you want the gabagool. Gabagool breaks down like capricola, and then yeah. it went capricol, and then it went gabagool. Yeah. Hey, where's the freaking gabagool? All right, guys, let's get into this gabagool. Oh my gosh, this looks incredible. Look that. at that perfect stacking. So, so this is a, obviously an Italian cured meat. I believe this is the hot one we got. Gabagool. gabagool. That's some damn good gabagool right there. This Hold is up. crazy. I would give this a 4.5 out of five. I'm a fan of the gabagool. Wow. There's that nice, thick, dense stack of the capicola, aka gabagool. Let's wrap that up. 
because we got our third sandwich here at Parisi. Forget Andrew, about it. you That's are a meatball sub guy. Andrew is a person with strong opinions on meatball subs. In oh. Italy, they would not eat this, right? Yeah, because a lot of the times they don't put like their cheese on, on their on their meat for the oh. most part. How could you not like but this? Meatball, meatball sub. Italian Americans have a kind of slang way they say mozzarella as well. I always say mozzarella or mutz. 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 Again, we don't pronounce our vowels. The meatball texture and quality was great. Yeah, I could have used a little kick. Still gonna give it a 3.5 out of 5. I'm gonna give it a 4.5. I like how homemade it is. Obviously, it's been around since 1903. Our next spot is gonna be a huge switch up. Let's go. All right, you guys, we are comparing authentic Italian sandwiches to, of course, the most famous purveyor of Italian sandwiches globally, Subway. How yeah. do Italian Americans view well, Subway? Because it's probably different than the way we Yeah, do. Um, I'll tell you this. If we're in New Jersey, say, and there's like nowhere to go, it's convenient. If you're gonna compare it to the spots that we're gonna go to, sorry Subway, but. Uh, you just shaded Jersey, all right? And sorry. Then, uh, <laughs> no offense people in Jersey, shout out to Jersey. So price-wise at Parisi, each sandwich is only about $8. Here at Subway, depending on what you get, it can be about that price too. I've never had the meatball from there, so Yo. this is gonna be funny. Let's cut to the chase, guys. Let's do it. Andrew likes Subway. <laughs> yeah, Andrew likes Subway likes a lot. <laughs> Not the greatest sandwich spot in the world. I like it though. Here's the thing about Subway, guys. You have the option of putting anything you want on the sub and it, to an extent, does not cost extra. I'm saying you gotta That's put the work in yes. to make that sub what it yeah. can be. You know how Jersey Mike's got Mike's way? Yes. I got Andrew's way. We're gonna do a direct head-to-head -head comparison. Andrew subs versus some authentic Italian subs. Let's see who wins. You gotta get the Italian herb and cheese. Andrew right now is totally focused. I'm just dressing up my meatball marinara. Because at Subway, you can do that. That's the whole point of coming here. I'm not saying this is the greatest sandwiches. I'm not saying that if you walk out, you don't smell like the bread for some weird reason. When you can customize it and you know what you're doing, you can really make it worth it. Guys, we got our Subway subs. Let's go to Regina's, which is owned by a second generation Italian American. Let's go. All right, Marco, what is next? So next we have Regina's Grocery. It's a newer generation, but has a lot of old feel in there. And we're gonna meet right now with the owner, Roman, who was a second generation Italian. Second generation, you're fifth generation. I'm fifth generation. He's a little bit more Italian than you. He's way more Italian than me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. We elevated what we kind of grew up on. We elevated your classic deli sandwich, and we just don't put the same ingredients as everyone else. I think that's the difference. I pay tribute to my family as a whole with the names of the sandwiches. And the sandwiches, it's a blank canvas. You do what you want, you know what I mean? But you gotta get creative. All right, you guys, we are here at Regina's. This is our hipster option. Obviously, I'm gonna go ahead and include Subway as the homemade. I mean, you still decide what goes on. So obviously, judging by the looks, I can tell that there's a difference between Subway and Regina's yes. flour dusted bread. It obviously looks a lot more artisanal and nicer. Make way for this one. What do we got here? Meatball oh, palm. That's what yes. I've been waiting for, yes. Don't sleep on Subway's okay, taste. Okay, okay. Do we need to try this right now? We just need to do Please this. Do. This, this really needs to go down right now. Regina's, Regina's meatball parm. Let me do a side by side. Andrew's meatball parm, uh, Regina's meatball parm. Yeah. I love how they have the garlic cloves, how the bread is just crunchy. Look at this mozzarella right here. That's beautiful. I give this a five out of five. Wow. Okay. Perfect. I gotta give it a 4.5 out of five just to leave some room. Subway's meatball oh, parm. Man, right Watch, now. this thing will surprise you. Subway, Subway meatball, meatball marinara. marinara. The bread's soggy, you don't have that crunch. I do like how the peppers though and the onions give it a better flavor. The meatballs remind me though of like the elementary school meatballs mm. that I used to get served. A little nostalgic. Yo. I'm gonna give it a 1.5. One! Oh! Yeah. It is not better than Regina's, but I would say the way I made it, Andrew's way, it wasn't bad. Mm. I still give it a 3.5 out of five. The fret's mozzarella, and I love how the bread is all, is all crispy. If these high quality meatball parms threw in a little bit of peppers in there, I would rock with that. This is the Uncle Jimmy. It's a hot super sata with uh, prosciutto, fresh mozzarella, and you got a balsamic glaze on there, I believe, with his own mother's homemade hot sauce. Uncle, Uncle Jimmy. Jimmy. I love that kick that it has, that hot sauce kick. Oh man, you know, the addition of the homemade hot sauce in there, which you don't really find homemade hot sauce on an Italian sub. And I love the arugula, it gives it another good taste and the fresh mozzarella. Good. I would give that a 4.5 out of 5. But this has to go up against Marco Spicy Italian from Subway. This is cousin Marco right here, sandwich. It's not even the same, man. It's not even the same, like, 
stratosphere. So next up, we got the Cousin Anthony. It has smoked chicken, fresh mozzarella cheese, and we got balsamic glaze with arugula. I know okay. you like arugula, because when we were in Subway, you asked them for arugula. You have any arugula? <laughs> oh, no arugula. All right, that's almost like a prank. The Cousin Anthony. Of all the sandwiches we had today, this might be the most similar to Italy. Yes, I would definitely say that. Cousin David's Subway sandwich. Cousin David, how you doing? Out of the Subway sandwiches, that's my favorite for sure. Really, I give like a 2.5 out of 5. The winner was clearly Regina's. Regina's, Regina's win. <laughs> I think Regina's is like the future of Italian sub. So our next spot, Tremazzini, actually serves these Venice style sandwiches, which is started by guys who are straight from Venice. Yo, let's go ahead over to Tremazzini. All right, Marco, we gotta make a quick stop because we are in Little Italy. A lot of the supermarkets are closed. Uh, obviously, they're a little bit worried about the election. One spot that's not scared is Pimante Ravioli. You're not scared. And I saw they have the Panettone cake there. And Chinese people actually love to eat that. Yes. I gotta get the uh, originator. Immediately, my eye is drawn to the La Florentine Italian special cake. Absolutely. So this is a Paoli Il Panettone Classico. Classico. So right over here, we have our Lady Fingers, which is a, a certain type of Italian finger food for dessert. We gotta get some raviolis. I'm gonna be cooking all night raviolis, and that's it. I'm gonna be on my Emerald Lagasse. There's a 50 count. Maybe they have something, because I cannot cook 50 raviolis and eat, because I might eat all 50, and that's a bad look for me right now. I'm not gonna lie. I've, I think I've ridden by this shop 1,085 times, and I've never been in here. They said it looks exactly the same after 100 years. We don't like change. We like it the way it is, because you know why? It works. Andrew, I've secured the, the, the panettone. Oh my gosh. It's like a uh, Chinese holiday right now. Never Smell that wine, that like, like liquor. That liquor. Yeah. Panettone Classico. It's better than the Chinese one. Wow, it's really good. It's like so soft, but not that oily. That'd be good right now with a little express sauce. Mm. Yo, let's just pop the top real quick, because Marco, you're about to cook these with your family later. Whoa! Whoa. Let's hit another spot. Let's go. Grandma, I'm actually going to cook some raviolis tonight. I know you, you you love making raviolis, so I have some. Marco, listen to me. Why can't you cook them in your own I'll clean up and everything. I want you there. Yeah, but I didn't even cook the pot. All right, you guys, we just arrived at Tramazzini on Houston Street. Let's go meet the owner, Filippo. We are the first one in the United States that makes these kind of sandwiches because we import the bread directly from Venice on a weekly basis. It's a very old uh, sandwich, uh, about 100 years old. Tramazzini, yeah. until you guys exported yeah, it to New York City, 100%. literally only was contained in Italy. Exactly. It never even went to Spain. Not before. Okay. <laughs> this is a <laughs> traditional <laughs> Venice sandwich. Like, does the Pope eat this? I mean, I, I hope so. Oh, I mean, <laughs> he, he better eat that. Tramazzini. All right, you guys, I am looking at a roast pork porchetta one that has been toasted, Ooh. which is not traditional, but they did it for the winter time. So I got the prosciutto with arugula and fresh mozzarella. Here I have the tuna and egg one, and I'm actually really excited about this because I actually like regular tuna sandwiches. I'm a fan. So guys, each sandwich is roughly about $10. The bread was actually super thin. It's almost like a sourdough, but with less sourdough flavor, and it was really yeah. easy to eat through. It was almost like the most elevated Uncrustable you ever had in your life. I gotta say, this sandwich is just a well-balanced sandwich. You know, the right amount of mayo and the bread is amazing. If you're not the biggest fan of tuna sandwiches, because I know not everybody is, but this one will speak to you. Trust me. The toasted wow. one is something special in the winter, but I, I think I might like the untoasted one even better. Wow. It's really pretty good. different to compare to like a Regina's or a Parisi. That might have been one of my favorite tuna sandwiches, if not my favorite tuna sandwich. I've ever had. What do you think about the way that um, the slang that New York Italians use for everything? You know, how I, I think it's very sweet. Oh, it's sweet. <laughs> you can call it prosciutto. You can call it prosciutto. Still, is gonna be the same product. Do you call it capicola or gabagool? Capicola. Capicola, right. So that's <laughs> your Italian American uh, slang. But mozzarella is the funniest. The funniest one. Mozzarella or mozzarella is amazing. Mozz and prosciutto is this the most authentic Venice experience you can get in New York City? 100%. Product wise, it is the only one and unique and done the way it should be. Salute. Salute. Pramazzini on Houston. Check it out. All right, before we go on to our next spot, we got to stop by some Italian spots that we didn't get to include in our Italian crawl a couple months ago. We're at Four Hours right here. This is one of the best pastry shops in Little Italy. The key 
word when we go inside is lobster tail. All right. That's a go-to and free rainbow cookies you get in there. You as well. love the rainbow cookies. I love it. You know it's what? the best. That's from Marco. Let's get the lobster tails. All right, let's go. All right, guys, so here we have the very hard to pronounce Scoffagalietta. It's better than what I would say, so yes. And then you have, of course, the lobster tail. This is the more popular one. This has ricotta, this has uh, Bavarian cream. This is a popular Toroni bar. I have these honey covered small mini Italian donuts here. Tiny Italian donut. Kind of like that Chinese oh, snack nice. from the bakery that's fried, you know? I don't know the name of that. Marco, yes, what, what, why, why are you hyped here so much, man? I don't know, there's just something about yeah. them that I just love my rainbow cookies. The Italian rainbow cookie from Ferrara. This is definitely better than the last one yeah. we had. Okay, and we've got our ricotta pastry, which nobody can pronounce. It's spelled like a SF Fagoladetta. Here I got this lobster tail filled with Bavarian cream, one of the most popular items you can get. Italian, Italian pastries. pastries. Yeah. Very subtle, I like this. Oh, the ricotta one's a sleeper. I don't know. Oh. The lobster tail is more the conventional pick though. I think this Sala Vagetta. So forget it. We're gonna call it the Safa, forget about it. I'm taking the ricotta pastry with the cream from the lobster tail. Oh. I'm a gavon right now. Where's a gavon? A gavon is like an animal when they eat food all over the place, that's what I'm like right now. Yeah, I kind of like a gavon. Got... Over here we have a Taroni bar. This one is the original vanilla flavor. Wow, this is really interesting. It has like this uh, layer of wafer to keep it all together. It's like nougat pressed between two really thin wafers. Woo! On to the next. All right, you guys, we just came from the Venice spot. Now we're at the Naples spot, La Pinineria. This guy, Mario, is raised in Naples and he came here and started this shop with his brother and his girlfriend. I feel like the more NYC, like 1900s Italians, they hang out in LES. This is more, I, I believe, like the more high-end Italian cuisine. I heard you could pay in euros here. Yeah. No, you can. Let's, Let's go. go. As we get into this, I've actually never had an authentic Italian soda before. I've had it from like the brands called like Rosanna's. This is straight from Italy. I wanna show you something really funny. Look at the calories. They're like the exact number. Salute. Salute. Wow, that's good. That's really good. Green tangerine, I never even had this one. This I'm, I'm drinking an orange. Okay guys, we are looking at the spread here at La Pineneria. You know what it is? Americans love sandwiches where it's really hard to eat. Where you gotta like stretch your mouth yeah, and be like, squeeze that. it together. Yeah. Nice. Look at the dimensions. Oh, Mortadella. The Italian spots, they just focus on few ingredients, yeah. really high quality, really strong flavors. You know what's really letting everything shine right now? Is the lack of mayo, but the presence of olive oil. I love how they have the pistachio in the mortadella. Isa nutti. Guys, of course, I am ah. the meatball sub guy. I gotta go in. This is sub not a meatball sub though. It's From a meatball with, with, with Parmesan, olive oil, arugula. Let's go. Let's do it. That's the best meatball sub of this whole video, bro. It's simple, it's tasty, it's being held together. Hey, Regina's was good, but this one? For me, that was my favorite as well. Yeah, that was it. To be fair, the Italy, Italy spots oh, have been yeah. kind of pricey. Uh, how much were these sandwiches? Like 14 each. This is probably the simplest sandwich of them all. Little bit of basil, olive oil, thick mozzarella. Prosciutto. Prosciutto. I think that was my favorite prosciutto sandwich I had today. This basil leaf had a lot of flavor. This might be my favorite. Oh my goodness, you guys, that does it for our heritage to hipster, to homemade, to motherland crawl. We tried so many different Italian sandwich spots. My Italian sandwich IQ jumped up like two to 300% in the past day. Prior to that, you know, we've had a couple Italian subs, but I didn't really think about it. You really see the difference when you try all the sandwiches one after another. I didn't have an experience like this ever in my life from Italian subs, American subs to um, authentic Italian subs. So it was a great experience. Top two sandwiches that we had this video. The tuna egg tramezzini, the wow. basil prosciutto here. My two favorite sandwiches was the uh, Uncle Jimmy. My second one, tramezzini, was the prosciutto. It was fresh and there's something about that bread. Like I might have to go to Italy just to grab the bread and go. I gotta have one meatball sub. And this meatball sandwich here was definitely the best one that we had. My other favorite sandwich was probably the Uncle Jimmy's at Regina's. I think for me, the most interesting thing about this crawl was to explore Italian America through several different lenses. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching that episode of The World NY. I know a lot of people out there are not traveling anytime soon, and we aren't either, but you can even travel within your own city, especially a place like New York City. Let us know in the comments down below what your favorite sandwich is of all time. It doesn't have to be Italian. Thank you so much. Shout out to Marco. Follow him 
him down below. He's trying to get his comedy career popping. Yeah, I'm trying, baby. Send I'm him trying. some love. Send him some encouragement. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace. We are here with Grandma. Grandma, say what's up to everybody. Hello, what's up? This is a spicy marinade. Here we go, guys. Okay. Ooh, Graham, like always, thank you. Love you. That's amazing. Okay. All right, guys. Enjoy. Thank you, Graham. I appreciate it. We're going to enjoy the raviolis now.